No, you let Hargrave, you let Hargrove, let Hargrove make you offer him a contract. You made him make you offer your contract. You go out, go out and show me what you showed me last year. Show me that wasn't a flash in the pan. Show me some consistency. That's see the difference between uh, uh, starters and backup players is consistency. See, so he could have just did that last year to try to do what you're saying. Get them to be like, hey, we, maybe we need to sign him again. And then he goes and pits down his leg and it has a crappy year. Make them, you make them pay you. That's what you do. You have to make them pay you. If he come out and kick an ass like he was doing last year, you know, about October, be like, hey, we need to sign this guy. We need to sign this guy out for another two or three years. It's going to be interesting. How they're gonna how they're gonna move this around and how they're going to play these guys. Cause like I told you, you got $30 million and two defensive tackles lined up here. Okay. Fletcher's making 14-4. Hardgrave on the other end is making 12-9. Then you got a rookie in the room here. What's that rotation gonna look like? What impact do you think he has on the defense? Let's get to our friend, Eagle Legend, Hollis Thomas and Let's ask him that question here because when he rolled into Philadelphia, they probably had a plan on how they were going to use him too. Hollis, I appreciate you doing this. Thank you, my friend. How's it going? What's uh, good, no dog? Chilling, man. How you feeling? Oh, good, man. Hey, hit on a little bit what I was saying there about how you think they're going to roll out Jordan Davis here and how you think they're going to play in this season. Well, if you, um, as you know, with any quality uh, defensive unit, there's a nice ta defensive tackle rotation. Because we, we're not built like the smaller guys who could go all game long. So you got to have a guy who you trust to go in there for 15 to 20 plays at, at each side. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to balance out. But in the end, when, the, when it's nut cutting time, it actually depends on who's, who's been making the most plays that, that particular game on who they're going to go with. So if the, if the kid Jordan Davis comes in and shows promise, I'm pretty sure they don't have a problem with scooting one of those other guys out of the way, preferably the one who – Who's on? Who's on? A, uh, only got one year left on a deal, and you know, and and showing showing what's up. But they're going to give him every opportunity to play. And if he and if he if he does as good as it as, as we want him to do, he's going to get a lot of playing time. So it's like, um, like for instance, I wasn't a, I wasn't drafted, but when I start playing, I play like fifteen or 20, 20 snaps per game. That's what he's like. That's what they started me out with. Then uh, um, later on in the season. They um I, my snaps started to go up, 25, 25 to 30. And then one game, it was a game here. We played against Washington Redskins here. It was the Redskins at the time. Deepest apologies, Commander. You know. yeah. but, so, um, <laughs> and Ray Rose was walking by me uh with the little uh the little ammonia caps <laughs> smelling them. He was like, he's like, I'm th I'm thinking about starting you today. You think you think you're ready for that? He's like, if I don't start you, you're gonna get step you're gonna get snaps like a starter. And I was like, I'm, you know, I'm ready. That that game, I got like 50 plus snaps. Stellar game. We ended up winning. I think I had a, I had a sack of like four or five tackles, but that's a, that's all in the past. But I ended up. Starting. Yeah, but wait a minute, Hollis. So your yeah. rookie year, you got to start. Yeah, I started the uh, game in uh in uh my first starting game was against Jake the Snake out in Arizona versus the Arizona Cardinals. That's awesome. Hey, when did you know? And how did you you did you start to feel? While that season was going on, because I'm going to be looking at Jordan Davis and his what production. Is, did you what, feel as the season went on, I, I, I should be getting more playing time here because I'm making more plays? Or did they just come to you and it was a shocker? Or did you know that you were going to start seeing more significant playing time? Well, well what I do know is uh, when you make your plays, they're going to get you some more plays. So they're going to get you some more opportunities to make more plays. So what I did, I played from the first, from the opening. My first first game was that opening season at RFK Stadium. I had three, I had three tackles on fifteen plays. Wow! <laughs> and the, the final tackle was a tackle to stop Brian Mitchell from getting the first <laughs> down, so they had to punt. Uh, but uh, but to to what you're saying, the way that he gets more playing time is making plays. If you don't, if you go in there and you don't know what you're doing. You're not making plays. You look lost. That's gonna you, you're gonna get some playing time, but it's not gonna be the playing time that you would like to garner like you're used to, and, and you're accustomed to. So you gotta see you gotta seize the second each each and every time you in there, especially as a backup. 
You got to show them that you that you know what you're doing and you're always ready. So as the play, as um, the season start progressing, they start getting more and more confident confidence in you because that's what it pretty much is. It's like you they had to get the confidence in you, the confidence in you. And not only do the coaches get the confidence in you, the players get the confidence in you as well because it was, it was some games where I, I was tired and we was on rotation and I, I tried to come out the game one time and, uh, and William Fuller was like, he said, hey, they're going to send that dumb dude in here. You, he said, you just, just fight it out. Fight it out. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't resonate to me until now or, or, or what people were saying, that, how, how they like to play with certain people and how sometimes they just send people out there and you know because they don't want to be wrong. Do you believe that they should have brought Fletcher Cox back at $14.4 million? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, why would he take a pay cut? Is he going to take any less snaps? A lot of people, and a lot of people go into, uh, into, into everybody's money. It's like, but it's like, if you're not going to play me any less, are you going to ask me to do the same job that you've been paying me for? I want, I want the same amount of money. Why should I take less? We could, and we could, and if you want to be an asshole about it, you could go down the list and pick the motherfuckers out that's not doing their job. And, and you say you didn't ask them to take a pay cut. You didn't ask them to take a pay cut. You didn't ask them to take a pay cut. But we don't. But see, then then you're in a pissing contest. It's like so. Don't ask me to take a pay cut if you're not gonna if you're not gonna lessen the load. So we still expect Fletcher to be the man. We still expect him to be the man for one more year at least. But it's like, but to bring him back here on, on something lesser, you you're going to get less. And it was going it was, it was, you feel unappreciated. I mean, I, I'm sure you've been you've been in that situation. It's, you've been in a situation where they bring you in and say and say, "Hey, we we need you to take a pay cut." Well, you pay you paying this motherfucker right here. The to- to- we call him toast. We call him toast. You, you did you ask him to take a pay cut? Well, why <laughs> why is he in here? It's like so. Don't don't give me that. Don't give me that crap. Because when people bring up somebody's pay, it's like you could. The reason why you're able to talk about those people is because of what they pay them. No, the reason I I brought the money up was because he is taking a four million dollar pay cut, and I was just asking how you think that. No, it's not. It's not a pay cut. From eighteen to fourteen. That that was his cap number was eighteen. His salary is going to be fourteen. He's still getting the he's still getting the money, but his cap number is no longer the same thing. So you got to look at it in in those terms. Okay. So it's like when he, I don't think he took a pay cut, but hell no, he didn't take a pay cut because if they still, you still got to prorate his uh, signing bonus. So, but let me throw this at you here. Hardgrave is going into his final year and he's not been offered a contract extension. If you're the Eagles, do you offer him a contract extension before camp or do you let it play out? No, you let Hardgrave, you let Hardgrove, let Hardgrove make you offer him a contract. You better make you off your contract. You go out, go out and show me what you showed me last year. Show me that one to flash in the pan. Show me some consistency. That's see the difference between uh, uh, starters and backup players is consistency. See, so he could have just did that last year to try to do what you're saying. Get them to be like, hey, we maybe we need to sign him again. And then he goes and pisses down his leg and it has a crappy year. Make them you make them pay you. That's what you do. You have to make them pay you. If he come out and kick an ass like he was doing last year. You know, about October, be like, hey, we need to sign this guy. We need to sign this guy out for another two or three years. I was like, but uh, right now, you don't have to do not. You don't have to do anything. He shouldn't even be worried about that. So, you, if as a player for you, would you mm-hmm. feel disrespected if I didn't have a contract going into September? Would you want to play that out though, Hollis? Because the again, thing, if you thing, have that little, big it's, year, it's a little different. You, you can put yourself on the open market. But it's a, it's a it's a little different now. So, see the thing is, is sometimes when you come the the contract disputes I the contracts I had you out uh, going into the September it would be disrespectful because they was paying you paying you crappy. It's like so the what you would do is like you come out and you make them pay you. But then it's like they always talk about buyers beware. But what if you come out just like you said and kick teeth in? You should have you should have paid attention when I was asking you to sign this contract. And it may have been about five to ten million less. Now that I've come and set the world on fire a bit, now you want to have it's no, no, you I don't. It's like you betting on yourself. It's like it, he's not being underpaid currently, so he really does. And, he, and he's, I mean, he's not being underpaid. No, he's twelve nine right now. I mean, yeah. it's I like mean, it's like if you if he was being underpaid, I can see, but he's not being underpaid. And I and if you just want some stability 
If that's what you're worried about, create it for yourself. Create it yourself. Milton Williams' role for this team will be what this year? Uh, he'll be. I think he'll be a, a bit of a swing man, kind of like he was last year. He was uh, more of like um, he played D tackle and he played. You D-tackle. see talent in him? Uh, yeah, I see talent in him. I see a little bit more talent in him, and I, I think it's more the, the coaching and him, him, him becoming mature. It'll be. It'll be. I, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm, I'm hoping to see him mature a lot more and and the more de, a more defining role. Get himself a more defining role. Because last year they put, played him at end, but they played him at tackle. They played him at end. They played him at tackle. But is is that going to be your uh, entire career, or are you going to get that defining role to where they talk about you in the same sense as they talk about uh, Davis, Hargrove, and uh, and uh, and Fletch? Like you, you have to make you have to make the call. Hollis, the type of talent that they have on the team, especially in the front seven, is it more conducive to a 43-34? Um, how do you see them utilizing all this talent? Because this has got to be the most talent that they've had. Or I would say this. I don't know, talent, how about depth that yeah. they've had since 17? What's this? What's it more set up for? Because, look, I personally, you can tell me if I'm wrong. I mm-hmm. don't think they're that deep at linebacker. Right. They're stronger in their fronts. So yeah. how do you how how do you see them utilizing this? Well, give, given the way given the way that they've been deploying things, I, I kind of see it eventually. Like at some points during the season, they're going to have all three of those D tackles out there over the middle three, and you're going to have a you had the uh, DNs all the outside linebackers lined up over the edge and running like a, a, a true fifty or fifty or a six two front, like where they where you know where they're just taking everything away. But it's, it's set up for a four three, a good four three. And it's like you, you can't do anything else. And a, and a bear or a cut front, which the offensive line called a Navajo front, uh, just, you know, covering up the center because most of the time the center is the weakest link. So you, you want to cover him up and, you know, make his reads and stuff hard. But given the talent we got, and I, I like the linebacker. I like, the linebacker core got a little bit stronger this year. N'Kobe Dean coming in. You also still had Sean Bradley, TJ Edwards, a second year. In, and, the, and the kid. Uh, and, uh, Kaiser White. And, Kaiser White, Avery, uh, dude, it's like it's, it's, they put competition, that true competition at the linebacker position. We're not just stiffing through the uh, strong safeties of the of the of college football anymore to try to find a to try to make him into a linebacker. And you know, it's like that's pretty much what we've been doing. We we had Alex Singleton, who was a great special teams player, the leading tackler, but most of them was six or seven yards downfield. We need we need guys who are difference makers who are going to uh, on third and long. That we don't have to run, we don't have to rush three and drop eight, and then we still give up third and fifteen. Derek yeah. Barnett's role, in your opinion, saw so much talent out of him in college, and it's just not panned out at the next level. And right. for whatever reason, Hollis, do you th- do you think there's a role on that defense for him, or do you think that they've already made their mind up on him? Well, they brought they brought him back, so obviously they think some of him. But I, I think he's going to be on a bit of a, a short leash. Give it his not not for talent, but for the bonehead penalties. It's like when you it's like when the coach said I, I I knew it was him. When the coach says that that type of stuff that he knew who the penalty was against, you your your days are kind of numbered. It's like you can't, especially the fifteen yarders and their senseless penalties. Penalties you you could you could just it was. Let me give you. I mean, let me slow down here. Let me give you a scenario <laughs> where he it was a senseless penalty. We even made the guy fumble. We played against Tampa Bay, all the way downfield. Play is over. They fought. They have. They they have fumbled. Was going to have to use a timeout to see was it really a fumble. But guess who pushed somebody in the back as the play? The whistle blowing right in front of the referee. Bam! Unnecessary, unnecessary roughness. You already got. You already got the moniker of being a dirty player. You know, what, Alice, is that the stuff you're talking about when they said that they trusted you? that you wouldn't be doing plays like that, that that's the kind of stuff along with success and putting mm. production up. That's the stuff you're talking about and why you're saying a short leash, because there's a trust factor here right. and a production factor here right. with him. Yeah. Right. The, the trust factor is, is he going to do something stupid? He's going to hit the quarterback late. Is he going to go, is he going to hit the quarter hands to the face or something? It's like, when you have, I, I had two penalties literally in my entire career. Two. Which is two, a 10 two. plus career. Yeah, it was, it was 14, 15 years, you know, but who's counting? But I, I had two, <laughs> and it was like one of one of them was I jumped off sides from trying to jump the count. The other one, the other one was putting all of my body weight, which I won't even call that a penalty. 
put all of my body weight on uh, Jake uh, Jake Plummer uh, on my first start. So when I sacked him, I, I scooped, I scooped and slammed him, like you know, <laughs> lock, lift, and drive. It's like it's a text, textbook tackle at any other time. It's like, but he's putting all of his weight on the quarterback. What the hell was I supposed to put it at? It's like, scooped <laughs> and slammed. <laughs> it's like, but if, if you ever can find it, it was like, uh, I was like ninety. Uh, oh, 96. hey, that's my favorite line. I scooped <laughs> and slammed his ass. I <laughs> <laughs> but if you, but but truly, if uh, I think it's, uh, I was able to go see the practice too. Uh, the practices are running a lot smoother than they were in the last year. Uh, now I'm 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 a, I'm a type of guy. It's like I'm I'm still waiting to see them in pads uh, versus another team. I was like, but uh, it's night and day compared to when I seen them when they first got started. Because remember when they first got started, they couldn't really do as much as they they're doing now. Yeah, but Paulus, I got to stop you. I got to ask you this. And to me, I've had a massive ass with this. Okay. This practicing of this week was supposed to be mandatory OTAs. Now, look, look, I get helmets and shorts. I'm not going to wake out about it. But last week, they're supposed to have six days and two days. I mean, six days OTAs. They end up having three. They can it. You know they're going to do the same process in training camp or they're going to break camp early. My question to you is this. The reason they got out to a two and five start last year was because of bonehead defenses and offensive <laughs> game plan. And on top of that, you weren't ready because you didn't practice. Those Phil Sims said this, Hollis. He goes, mm. There's a difference between those organized practices with other teams and right. quality reps when you get into the exhibition games. Yes, it's exhibition, yeah, but those are higher quality reps yeah. than you and get. They're, they're, and they're your take quality. on this, yeah, your take on quality. how the Eagles are going about it. And the, the higher quality reps is, is, is true because you get – well, I, I, I like the in, in, in team practice not, uh, when you practice against another team because the competition level goes up a little bit. I was like, but it's nothing you can beat about you, – nothing you can beat with live action. Live action, and, 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 you know, you got the true referees out there and everything is happening. It's nothing to – you can't even – you can't imitate that. That's why when, when, say, when people say that people, oh, he's doing good in practice – it's like, yeah, but that's his teammate. He's not trying to maim him. It's like so, uh, and, and I'm I'm kind of with you uh, uh, to a certain extent. Like, I like what they're what they're what they're doing now a little bit. It's like because we would have played for eons if they did uh, did that with us. We would probably just be quitting right now. <laughs> but, no doubt, two a days, three a days sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so it's like with that with what they're doing now. I, I still think it leads it leads to a more of those soft tissue injuries. A soft, uh, soft tissue injuries at the beginning of the season, but the thing, but the thing with um, with the birds this year is they had a chance to meet with everybody. They have had had chances to uh, put their stuff in, so they've been they've been doing stuff with OTAs, and it's not like uh, it's not like like last year they couldn't do really nothing. So they've been had they've been had they have their stuff together. I don't think, I expect them. To, I expect to see a faster start than I did last year. It's like me, I expected I, I expect it to be a lot a lot better. And that's what I saw when I saw them saw them doing their, their little practices and stuff. You know, you, you know when a new coach gets there, everybody is is in that mode of, you know, oh, am I supposed to be over here? Or am yeah, I supposed yeah. to be over there? And, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a bit of hesitation. He who hesitates masturbates. It's like it's one of those one of those moments where uh you can see everybody knew where to be and how to do it. Where to be and how to do it, where to be and how to do it. The only th- the only reservation I have is uh, how are we going to deploy this defense? Are we are we going to be a true number ten defense, uh, uh, top ten defense where we attack and, and people are scared of us? Are we going to come out with this bitch made crap that we we was doing last year with uh, with sloughing and stuff and standing at the sticks and not doing anything and having full rush and everybody knows? And put it this way, Tom Brady said he knew the in the <laughs> I heard him on the sideline during a playoff game. They're doing the exact same blank shit that they did to us in the regular season game. We're going to kill them. That's what he said on the sideline. I'm like, I'm like, I was. Pissed. Hey, Hollis, I heard Troy Aikman going like this. He was going like this. Throw the ball to the left. Throw the ball to the left. Throw mm-hmm. the ball to the left. So that leads me to this. Then, do you think the coaches? Hey, if one thing, the players have to up their game with experience. Mm-hmm. Are you expecting the coaching staff to be better this year, defensively and offensively, with Sirianni and Gannon? I'm not. I'm expecting. I'm expecting Gannon to be ten times better. The offense came along last year. And they helped the defense out a lot. A lot of those long drives and stuff. And the thing that I loved what Sirianni did, he didn't do that crap that everybody else does. And 
they think that, oh, I'm going to fool them on this play. No, we're going to run this ball down your throat. You can't stop it. How many times have you been in a game and they've been running the ball down your throat? You try to stop them. It's like, please throw a pass. Just it's throw over. Please. <laughs> <laughs> because not, nothing demoralizes the defense because everybody gets in there after they ran the ball down your throat and it's the six play of the drive and everybody's in there huffing and puffing. Talking about you wonder what they're going to do this next play. What the hell you think they're going to do? Hey, Hollis, <laughs> I tell people the this PBO all the time. coming right at you. Hey, when a team runs the ball for 200 yards on you, man, it's like having one hand tied behind your back, and there's nothing you can do about it, man. Nope. I mean, and you, don't, and you can a use power that. team kills you like that, it's over. Yeah, and it, it's like a lot of people, because I was laughing because everybody was talking about something, you throw to run the ball. No, you run to throw the ball. Because once you get those horses up front time, there will not be a pass rush, and you can pick the secondary apart. And you the play the play action fakes. Oh my God, they're gonna be so they're gonna be so deadly after you get 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 bludgeoned up and down the field. And they've been doing what they wanted when they wanted. They've been dictating the game to you, man. And, but people but people always want to pass. They always want to look pretty. As soon as they miss pass, you always see the receiver like this. <laughs> <laughs> like what you looking for a penalty? Go after the rock. You know? <laughs> hey, too much hype on this team. Um. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't like the fact that every like last year everybody was uh, acting like chumps and stuff. Called saying we was gonna win four four games. Uh, I I distinctly said nine or ten games, and we was gonna get our ass kicked in the first round of the playoffs. That was that was, that was that was my distinct prediction. And I was like, I'm expecting. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not expecting leaps and bounds. I'm expecting them them to take a step up by winning a playoff game and, and making some noise and putting everybody on notice. And I, I think that in, in watching them and, and watching how they work, I don't think I don't think they're not paying attention. I don't think they're going to eat the cheese. Okay, well I'm going to tell you something. I thought that when you were on last, I thought you were crazy when you said one thing. What's that? That's something about Andy Reid. And then get this: mm -hmm. Tyree Kill comes out three weeks later. Hang on, it goes like this. You know what, man? They just weren't being truthful with me. They never offered me a contract, and he goes. They were telling me one thing and doing another, and he kept saying how much this and that. And then every time I went to the guy, the guy kept going, Reed hasn't gotten back to me. And before you know it, I was out the door, and I went, shit, man. This is almost the same shit that Carlos <laughs> Thomas told me, man. They, played, they ran him around the room, I know, and they ran him out of the building the same yeah. way. So you were dead on, man. I apologize. You were you well, were I dead just, right with this. I was not. We'll see if uh... – my, you, know, you thank Carolyn Virginia, Carolyn Virginia. That's my mom. She the one. She's she. She never trusted him. And it took me until he played me close. Uh, to what, what, uh, when they traded right before they traded, year before they traded me to the Saints. It took me until he played me close then to uh, to realize what she was talking about. Moms are always right. <laughs> <laughs> um, she called him a snake in the grass, and that's what you know. I, I will stick with that. Like everybody's. I like, I think he's a, I think he's a Hall of Fame coach, uh, but I don't think he I don't think he makes it to the Super Bowl or or wins it without the enemy calling the plays offensively. I don't care what nobody says. He's a good planner and he's a good he, he's a good planner, and he if you uh, give him an opportunity to be prepared, he will he can't prepare a team to be a winner as long as you give him the defense first. I'm going to ask you one last question. This is about Jack Del Rio in the locker room of the Washington Commanders. No, brother. <laughs> is it get, get this? Hollis, people have their own personal opinions and things, yeah. but I said this the other day. When you're in an NFL locker room, you don't have freedom of speech. What you have <laughs> is you have to remember things that are said in that locker room, and right. you start pissing people off and bringing outside noise into the building. Right. That's where I think, look, I don't care what Jack thinks. It's not my life, but right. don't bring it in the locker room because that right. means other players have to start answering those questions exactly. and you're not going to get the response that you want to hear. Just mm -hmm. your take. That was my take. He should have yeah. shut it home. Well, my take, my take was, uh, I didn't know he was that stupid because he called it, he called up, up the thing that happened at the white house where seven people died of dust up. Um, I don't, it's in given, given who you're trying to coach, um, trying to coach, coach a, bunch, a bunch of young brothers, uh, and for you to have the, uh, I'm gonna call it. They call that's what they call white privilege. It's like he think, and he still, I think he still thinks that he was correct in what he said. But you're earning your keep off of some of the same young men who have that fear every time we see 
the raspberries and blueberries in the in the, in our rearview mirror. I was like, for you to say that about a man who who di who died, an unarmed man who died, versus some people who actually, dude, we're talking about the Capitol. You start talking. Let, let's let's cut let's cut the shit. We talk. We are talking about the Capitol. Motherfuckers stormed the Capitol. You talking about people personally pro personal property? We're talking about our capital, our nation's capital, got stormed. And you have people, I was like, and you call it a dust up? But to what you're saying, that's the type of shit you keep to yourself. That's why they say you keep your politics and your religion to yourself. I was like, because I can have a disagreement with you. I have no problem with having a disagreement with you. But when you come and you're that wrong, I, 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 don't, I don't give a damn about it. It's right and wrong. And right is right and wrong is wrong. Neither, neither one of the situations that he's speaking about was was right. Like the, it's, we, there shouldn't have been any uh, messing up of any property and stuff, and that, there shouldn't have been none of that should have happened. I was like, but to call the thing at the at the you, you, the nation's capital a dust up that that was the dumbest thing in the world. But to post it, what the hell are you you post you're tweeting it, and it's, I, it goes to the <laughs> other part of what you're saying. You hey got man, this is in the street. Yeah, it's I, like put it this way. I, it's cool for me to know that you, you that you're a fucking idiot. I was like, but if everybody else knows, how can I defend that? I cannot defend that in public. But I can defend if you shut the fuck up. If you shut the fuck up and we and we and we know we're not, oh he's just, he's crazy. That's not, that's that's our family, but he's crazy. But for everybody else to know how crazy you are and to the magnitude, I, it's like I can't defend that. It's like yep. there's no way on God's green earth. Any anybody who they who they ask who they ask uh, uh about that situation are probably gonna disdain from comp. Uh, comments uh, on it because they're with the organization, and that, and I think Ron feels like he he rectified it, but it's gonna be it's gonna be rough it's gonna be rough for Jack Del Rio for a hot second until it, he needs to. I'm not gonna even say what he needs to do, but if I made that that type of statement, if, if it was the way I felt, I would I would come out and apologize to anybody I offended, because it's it's like because if he feels that way and he truly feels that way, who am I to say uh, you know how how he's supposed to feel. No, no, he, he apologized, Hollis. He apologized to everybody in the in the room. And so f what Ron and everyone are saying and the teammates are saying is that it was received well and he apologized. But like you said, we shall see. Hollis, I got a roll. <laughs> Thank know. you so Let's much. Go. Always fun kicking it around with you, my friend. Please, uh, yeah, I, I hope um, you get to do it again. Yeah, just let, uh, let me know. I'm, all, I'm always around. Um, actually, I'm doing Ron Jaworski's. Uh, uh, he's having a party on Thursday night. You know, they, Fantastic. You know, they, they, yeah, it's like uh, he does a golf tournament every year. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, Tell Jaws I said hi. Okay, cool, cool. Thank I, you, I, Hollis. I appreciate I it. That is right. Hollis Thomas, right. man. I love talking some ball with him, man. That was really salty and really good. We really appreciate it, guys. Please hit the like button. Don't forget Morgan and Morgan, where the fee is free. Choosing that attorney is one of the most important things if you're hurt or injured on the job. For the people, my friends, this is not a slogan. Morgan and Morgan lives by this line here okay for the people last 30 years they've collected over 13 and a half billion dollars worth of compensation settlements for their clients over 800 strong attorneys and offices in philadelphia new york and florida they're there to do battle for you they're the biggest law firm in the country and they will be ready for you no such thing as a fender bender look the call is free 800-512-1600 that's 800-512-1600 look 24-7 seven days a week. And when you call Morgan and Morgan, do me a favor, tell them Big Sill sent you. After a car crash, the big insurance companies you see advertising on TV, they may try to downplay your case and might say, it's only a fender bender or it's just a herniated disc. I worry that some law firms fall for this BS, not us. We put ourselves in your shoes and ask, what would it be like to be in your pain for the rest of our lives? A million dollars wouldn't be enough for me. There's only one Morgan & Morgan for the people.com.